What is the most frustrating part of the city's affordable housing shortage issue for you? The most frustrating part is people that I know who want to live in this city who can't live here mm -hmm. because they cannot afford it. And I hear their stories of where they've tried and it's really, it's really frustrating, mm -hmm. particularly our city employees. I had one employee tell me, for instance, you know, she's on call. And so at any time she may get a call and have to come into the city and she has to drive 40, 50 minutes to get into the city because she can't live here. She can't afford to live here. So that's a very frustrating thing. Yeah. We have college residents who went to school here and, co and can't live here, mm -hmm. police officers, middle income families can't live here. Everybody's being forced out to the burbs. The socioeconomic divide is just growing and growing and growing. You have spent 20 years as a city council member, almost four years as city council president. In all of that time, what have you done to build or create more affordable housing in the city? So I have been working on this issue before it was an issue. I remember when we were doing the Beltline, I was very concerned about the speculation of property and the increase in that property and fought very hard. And successfully, we amended our belt line to make sure that we had an affordable housing trust fund. Unfortunately, it didn't get utilized the way that I would have liked to see it and certainly have spoke out against that. But in my district, District 9, that was what I was about. Every development that was built in my district had to have an affordable component or they had problems for me, the council member. That started with Perry Homes when it was redeveloped to West Highlands. We have affordable senior facilities, affordable apartments, and a big model, which was a big fight, but we were able to accomplish it affordable single family homes in that development. Mm -hmm. And then I've also uh, helped build out at least two or three other senior facilities that are really affordably priced for our seniors because many of them, when they get to a point of wanting to leave their homes, they're having a difficult time finding affordable units. And so yeah. everything we've done, even the public shopping center, uh, which I'm so proud of that we were able to fill that food desert, the housing component, we made sure that at least 20% of it was affordable and actually even more is affordable. Does it almost seem like a flood sometimes? You make a dent and the problem just keeps getting bigger and bigger? Exactly. So when you, when you build development in the city and you uplift the community by, for instance, putting in a grocery store, or putting in shopping, it sort of has a halo effect that increases the value of property around it and people who want to live there. And then people who sell property see, hmm, well, if I have a house that's 200,000, I can maybe build one that's four. And so the assessed value of property is really important to look at. And people don't realize that 56 cents of every dollar goes to the school board, 23 approximately to the city and the other to the county. Mm -hmm. So I want to work with our other taxing jurisdictions to see if for our legacy residents who've maybe lived in their homes for 15 years or more, that we can freeze that assessment until they sell that property. That's one way we can help legacy residents stay in their homes. What other things will you do differently as mayor when it comes to affordable housing? We're talking about legacy residents. What other initiatives will so, people, can so, people look forward to? Yeah, so I want to flip the script on incentives that we've given out. Mm -hmm. Typically people say, hey, I'm going to build this. I'll give you a few affordable units, you give me the incentive. I want to flip it and say, we want X amount of affordable units, we want it here, because we have a lot of city-owned property, we have a lot of land bank authority property, we have a lot of AHA property, and if you build what we ask, then we'll give you the incentive. I think that's how we have to try to get people yeah. to, particularly the private sector, to be able to build. And then we've got to allow them to have the permitting that they need mm -hmm. uh, and do it in a timely manner so they don't have to pass high burdens of waiting for permits onto the, the residents. Yeah. I spoke to a resident yesterday mm -hmm. who pointed out that over the years they've heard many promises about how that vacant land will be used and it's a blight in their neighborhoods and it's just been years and years of promises. How can the residents be assured that you're going to be the mayor to make that happen? Well, people can look at my track record. I don't say things that I don't do. And if I find I can't do them, they know I will come back to them and let them know. I'm a person of my word. That's why I'm running for mayor, essentially, is we have a long list of things that we said that we we're going to do and we just haven't gotten to them. Mm -hmm. And I want to get things done. And so they should uh, rest assured, uh, knowing my track record, that I, I will do what I say. It's a big list. 
It is a long list. And as I say, many hands make light work. All of this is not going to be done by this single individual alone. We're going to work and partner with any and everyone that we can. I'm looking forward to partnering with NACA, which is a housing advocacy group. We also help with financing, help to build capacity for people to own homes, and I'm proud to have their endorsement. I'm looking to bring our private sector, our philanthropic, our university, everybody to the table because we got so many issues that uh, we all got to work on them together. Yeah, got to roll up your sleeves big That's time. That's right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for Council having me. Council President Moore.